Today, we're in Richmond, Kentucky. We're going to finish off our series of visiting Hall of Fame baseball players from here in Kentucky, Richmond Cemetery. Y'all ready? <laughs> So here we are in Richmond. It wasn't difficult to find the gentleman's stone that we're headed to at the moment. Um, and unfortunately, I'll show you why. But first, let me tell you who we're going to see. Mr. Earl Combs. He was a Major League Baseball player. He was a part of three world championship teams New York Yankees he was the center fielder and the leadoff hitter for the 1927 New York Yankees 27 28 and 31 I think that's probably not right anyway here is how I found this stone <laughs> based on a photo I could tell it had a Pretty significant lean to it so it being a taller stone try to get your horizon there we go the horizon is pretty level at the moment and you can see kind of a leaning tower of Pisa effect going on so let me tell you a bit about Earl Combs he was born in a tiny community called Pebworth that is located in Owsley County now Owsley County it's one of the poorest regions in our, our entire country. I really hate to say that, but it's true. Pebsworth sits just a little bit northwest of Boonville, which is the county seat. The population of Boonville was 251 people on the 1900 U.S. Census. Uh, and in 2022, the population was listed at 139. So when I say tiny, I mean tiny. As I mentioned, Dowsley County is one of the poorest communities in the entire country. Um, so it was no, no surprise that Earl grew up a very poor young man. Um, he didn't have money to play any kind of baseball, which not that there were enough people to do a little league or anything like that. But um, he would play with sticks. That was his bat. He'd find balls of string or shoe stuffing or just anything he could wad up and turn into a ball. Um, it's pretty phenomenal how he became who he became. So that's the intriguing part of this story. So that's what I'm going to tell you about next. Earl didn't leave Pebworth until he moved away to attend what is now known as Eastern Kentucky, which where this cemetery sits is almost directly in the middle of campus. It's kind of wild. Um, but at Eastern Kentucky, uh, Earl Combs studied to be a teacher. And up to that, po that point, Combs, as I had mentioned before, had never really played any organized baseball. During a student faculty game, Eastern's baseball coach at the time was Dr. Charles Keith. He saw Combs showing great skill and athleticism, so he approached Earl and he encouraged him to join his baseball team at EKU. So that's exactly what Combs did and he excelled on the baseball diamond. According to the EKU Hall of Fame page, Earl Combs hit at least one home run in every single game he played in his first season at EKU. He compiled an absolutely absurd batting average of 596. That's crazy. Earl, you stud you. Wow. Wow. All right. So... Baseball wasn't the real reason that Earl wanted to attend EKU. Earl wanted to be a teacher, and he wanted to go back home in Owsley County, and he wanted to uh, serve his community. So, after he graduated from EKU, that's exactly what he did. While teaching is what Earl thought would be his career, he never really stopped playing baseball, right? Uh, it was in his time in the Bluegrass League, which was a league around several cities here in Kentucky, uh, there was like the Lexington Reds, and that was the team that Earl was a teammate with Happy Chandler, actually. And Happy actually threw a perfect game. It's an interesting fact. But Earl, he, uh, he played for some uh, coal mining teams, and then he finally joined up with the Lexington Reds. 
from the reds, that is where the Louisville colonels spotted him. And they immediately snagged him up, took him to Louisville, and put him to work. Once he joined the Louisville colonels, he was paid more than what he was getting paid in his career job. And so he decided that he would give that up for a bit and chase his baseball dreams. And <laughs> I'd say they paid off. Once he joined the Louisville Colonels, Combs absolutely destroyed pitchers. He hit to the tune of a 380 in 1923, and that's when the New York Yankees came to call. Um, there was kind of a bidding war for Earl's contract. Uh, eventually, the New York Yankees won that. Uh, they bid $50,000, which in today's money is roughly $900,000. So that's a lot. In 1924, Earl Collins became the center fielder for the New York Yankees and eventually became the leadoff hitter, where he was torrid. He got on base all the time. And there were a couple guys behind him that were pretty good at baseball. Mainly two guys named, what was the one guy's name? Oh yeah, Babe Ruth. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. And then uh, Lou Gehrig. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. I believe there were five Hall of Famers on that 1927 team which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. So as I mentioned, Combs' best season was in 1927. Um, he was part of the squad of the Yankees that was often referred to as Murderer's Row because they would just kill opposing pitchers, right? So, yeah, I was correct. It is a stacked lineup that included five future Hall of Famers. And in 1927, Earl Combs dominated. He hit an astounding 356 with a league-leading 231 hits, which I believe is 11th all-time um, in a single season. I think Ichiro has the, the top. I think he's about 250-something. Uh, so that's a pretty daggone big deal. You can see why they got so many runs scored. I mean, Earl was getting on base, and he was speedy. I mean, speedy. How speedy? Okay, well, he wasn't much with the uh, home run bat, right? He only had six home runs, but he had 36 doubles, 23 triples. 23 triples. I can't even, I can't even wrap my head around that. Ellie De La Cruz only has like nine this season. And he's the fastest guy in baseball. Wow. Anyway, anyway, he also drove in 64 runs that year. Now, he continued his domination through the 1933 season. Um, 34 and 35 weren't so kind to him, unfortunately. Uh, in 1934, he was chasing a fly ball, and he ran into the wall, and he nearly died. He spent two-plus months in the hospital rehabbing. He had a fractured skull, a broken shoulder, and a busted-up knee. Several days after he ran into that wall, it was 50-50. They didn't know if the man was going to make it through or not. Thankfully, he did, because that, be, that would be very tragic, and I don't want to cover a story like that, although I'm sure at some point I will. Anywho, Combs came back after he rehabbed aggressively, and he attempted to come back in 1935, but he was... Uh, he was hit with another injury, unfortunately, and he knew waiting in the wings was a young center fielder that they, rightfully so, were ready to promote and play in the major leagues. That guy you may have heard of, Joe DiMaggio. That's right. Earl Combs was replaced by Joe DiMaggio. No sour grapes there. <laughs> so Earl retired as a player, but he didn't leave baseball. He remained as a coach in the major leagues for more than two decades. He was one of the key cogs in three different New York Yankees championships, 1927, 1928, and 1932. In 1970, the Veterans Committee voted Earl Combs to go into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, a lot of people will argue that he, he really didn't deserve it. Uh, it was a shortened career due to injuries, so I mean, I can kind of understand it, but just like his old buddy Happy Chandler, right? I think his actions held more weight than his numbers. His character, his ability to 
lead, his ability to let everyone understand that they were a part of something bigger, right? It doesn't get any bigger than the 1927 <laughs> Yankees. I mean, come on. So the thing about it is, is even, even Babe Ruth had something nice to say. He said, Combs was more than a ball player. He was always a first-class gentleman. And that is probably why his nickname was the Kentucky Colonel. Now, <coughs> Earl had something to say later on about Babe Ruth. And uh, it's kind of comical. It wasn't really it wasn't really trying to put down Ruth. Um, it's more of a playful, jovial thing. Like, you would probably say it in the locker room, right? So, he's talking about, he's talking about, I'll just read this to you here. He's talking about, about Babe, and he's he's meaning to talk about his business acumen, right? He wasn't the best businessman, and, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that in a second. So, what Earl said was, Babe was just a big kid. I mean, he just never grew up. For a fellow who weighed 240 pounds, he could run and was a great defensive man. He had baseball instincts, and I never saw him make a bad play. But outside of baseball, he was dumb as an ox. <laughs> and, and to elaborate on that, um, one of the previous videos that I did where I, I, I visited the grave of Happy Chandler, um, Happy saw Ruth towards the end of his life. He was an alcoholic, and he was penniless. And so... That's kind of a testament to what, I mean, it was jovial, the little poke that Earl did, but there's some truth behind it as well. Um, not that anything comes, anything good comes out of someone being an alcoholic and, and passing away. Um, it did give Happy the initiative to institute a pension plan for the Major League Baseball. So you got to find a silver lining, right? And I guess that's probably it. That's going to do it for this video. Um, I truly appreciate you all watching. It means the world to me. Uh, it's something I always really wanted to do, this YouTube channel. But I never really had the time. And I kind of found my niche with f photography. And I fell into the local scene for a long time. And I love the local scene. And I'll continue to do things there. But my health just... I can't do what I used to do and I don't half-ass anything so this allows me to do the things that I wanted to do at my own pace and seeing how this thing is growing uh, it's, it's 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 humbling I'm just some redneck with a, a GoPro and a, a desire to learn so I appreciate you very very much and I hope you'll come back and see a few more videos with us in the future but for now See ya.